final countdown. The Senate and the House rush toward the finish line. We'll have the latest on where things stand. We felt at this point um, that there wasn't any more work that could be done. Plus a grisly discovery. My goal in saying anything at all, like I, I don't want to jeopardize the investigation. Of course, I want whoever did this to be caught. A bear found shot and killed near Yellowstone, just yards off the roadway. And feeling the heat. The guys have to play into it, and they have to play into their imagination, right? But it, 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 the more they play into it, the better the scenario turns out to be. Billings firefighters prep for wildfire season will take you inside the training. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lewis. We'll have those stories in a minute, but our top story tonight, school board election night 2023. And we are covering several of those big races. And this one on a lot of minds, two bond issues in Laurel totaling some $88 million. For a $200,000 home, that would add just over $25 per month in taxes, coming out to about $300 per year. Well, here's a look at that first bond, $57 million for a new elementary school. Now, this one looks like it's going to pass with 55% of the votes this evening. However, that second bond for $31 million going towards improvements at the high school appears to be heading toward defeat as 52% of voters have said no. Well, those are far from the only races tonight. Several school board positions are up for grabs across Yellowstone County. Let's get to all of those races right here in Billings for School District 2. With four positions open, we'll start with High School District B. Brooke Wagner facing off with Brandy Siebel. And this one is going to go to Wagner with 69% to a 31% margin. Now to District 1 with Tanya Ludwig and Ken Ard facing off. And Ludwig will retain her seat on the board with 60% of the vote. And now to District 2, Jana Hafer going against Star Emery. This one's going to go to Hafer as she garners 57% of the votes tonight. And the final race, District 6 with Andrea Nemitz and Roger Santalia. And this was the closest race but it looks like Nemitz will win out with 51% of the vote. And you can find all of those results from across Yellowstone County right now on our website, ktvq.com. All right, now we want to send it over to our Phil Van Pelt as he dives further into the School District 2 races, explaining what made them so unique. These races are unique because recently elections of all kinds are increasingly more political and in some cases that's leading to increased frustrations. All we do is get up every day and try and do the best job we can for our students and we do a very good job. Those are the words from Superintendent Greg Upham who says the job of an educator is an increasingly more difficult one in today's climate. Our people are exhausted seeing the division and the energy that's put into place. I mean COVID was a lot then you got the critical race theory and the sex ed and the LGBTQ and all our people are doing is just taking care of our kids. Tuesday, eight candidates were vying for trustee seats for districts 1, 2, 6, and high school B. But a feeling of division in the community has been in focus since the pandemic. I think the pandemic tipped a lot of people. There were definitely a lot of concerns around things that we had to sort out, and they had never existed before. Current School District 2 board member Zach Terakitis says personal biases only serve to distract from the job teachers have to do. I think that it's important for people to understand that there's 16,000 kids that are showing up to school every day and they're being educated by some of the top professionals in the country that are doing that good work and we got to support them and make sure they have the space to do that. We have the time to do that. They have the support to do that. Up them echoes the teachers already have a full plate. We're worried about school shootings and school violence. I mean the pressures that are put on us from that and then all the externals that, that were caught in this crossfire of political issues is wearing us out, and, and it's frustrating. But amongst that frustration, both Upham and Terakitis say students are always top of mind and conversation, regardless of political views. Regardless of political spectrum, we're all across it. Um, all of us show up to do work together, and we, we have conversations that are uh, valuable to getting the problem solved, and that's what we hope for in this election. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. The 68th session of the Montana legislature is winding toward a close as today the Senate officially adjourned. But have all the lawmakers now crossed the finish line? MTN's Jonathan Anberian has the very latest tonight from the state capitol. The final hours of the Montana legislative session didn't go quite as most people were expecting, but both chambers did get their work done, including the biggest step, finalizing the state's main budget bill, House Bill 2. 
Around 3.20 p.m., Senate Minority Leader Pat Flowers, a Democrat from Belgrade, made a motion to adjourn sine die. Republican Senate President Jason Ellsworth of Hamilton expressed concern that the House hadn't yet finished its work on the state budget. But sine die is a non-debatable motion, and when it was allowed to move forward, it ended up passing 26 to 24. And we felt at this point um, that there wasn't any more work that could be done that would be to the advantage of Montanans, and it was time to leave here. Senate Majority Leader Steve Fitzpatrick, a Republican from Great Falls, said he was initially disappointed in the adjournment, but he concluded they would be able to resolve anything that needed to be fixed. This little motion aside, it's, it's, been, it's been a great session for Republicans, for the people of Montana. I, I, you know, we'll look back in a couple months and I think we'll really be proud of what we accomplished here. The Senate's decision left the House needing to adjust. Things have changed slightly in the last couple hours. The House needed to reconsider its actions on a series of significant bills since they could no longer work out differences with the Senate in a conference committee. What we need to do is the bills that are within the House um, control, uh, we'd have to keep them um, as they came over from the Senate. So that is the situation the House finds itself in tonight. House Bill 2 was the last bill debated. The House accepted the Senate's amendments with relatively little discussion. I think it does good work overall for this state. It will uh, serve us well. After final votes on more than 50 bills the House still had under consideration, and speeches from termed out legislators and the House Minority Leader, Majority Leader, and Speaker, the motion to adjourn sine die came from Representative Lola Sheldon Galloway at 9.14 p.m. 89 representatives have voted aye, 7 have voted no. Motion is passed and the 68th legislative session is adjourned. The legislature used 87 out of their 90 allotted working days this session. May 2nd is the latest in the calendar year that a session has wrapped up since at least 1999. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. President Biden has ordered 1,500 soldiers to the southern border to try and bolster security there. The Biden administration is ending the Trump-era immigration policy known as Title 42 on May 11th, which denied immigrants entry into the U.S. as a way to stop the spread of COVID. An expected surge of people is expected to move toward the border. As a result, the Pentagon is deploying active duty soldiers who will stay on the border for 90 days. The 1,500 new troops will join the 2,500 who are already there. State and federal wildlife agencies in Wyoming are investigating a disturbing case. Yeah, grizzly was found shot dead just 14 miles outside of Yellowstone National Park in what appears to be an act of poaching. Tonight, our David J has the details. A wildlife photographer in Wyoming came across a bear that had been killed. Pictures have been posted on social media, and it's not clear exactly what happened, but it's brought up responses from those who work closely with animals. Photographer Amy Gerber was driving along the North Fork Highway between Cody and Yellowstone National Park when she spotted something that made her hit her brakes. A grizzly bear lying dead just a short distance off the road surrounded by game wardens. The game and fish guys looking around an area, I would heard that a bear had been hit by a car. So I stopped and when I spoke with them, the, uh, the bear had not been hit by a car. Um, they confirmed to me that the bear had been shot. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department won't confirm the bear was shot, but confirm it and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are investigating. One photograph, it appeared that maybe the right paw was missing, but he said no, it was just folded under. Gerber has been a biologist and a natural wildlife photographer for more than 30 years, and even knows some bears in and around Yellowstone by number or name. I think I saw this bear a couple of days ago. It looks like the same bear, and I saw it in the willows along the river. Anytime that we see an animal that dies of suspicious causes, especially gunshots, your mind immediately goes there, and it's, it's, a, it's a sad day when, when things like that happen to our wildlife. Jeff Ewelt, Zoo Montana Executive Director, says poaching cases do not happen often, but when they do, it's a big concern, especially when it involves a federally protected animal under the Endangered Species Act. It's devastating for us in the animal world to see something like this, to see a beautiful animal like that wasting away for no reason. It's currently estimated there are fewer than 1,800 grizzly bears living in the lower 48. Another reason Gerber says crimes like this are just so heartbreaking. We live in this amazing place. We live in this last stronghold for something like a grizzly bear in the lower 48 states. And I mean, I don't take that for granted one single day. In Billings, David J, MTN News.
few things you can look for in the evening sky right now. We'll start off with areas off towards the west where Venus, the second brightest thing in the sky right now, very visible. If you look just a little bit above that, you'll be able to pick out Mars throughout the evening as well. Of course, it shifts around throughout the evening, but once you find Venus, Mars won't be too far away. And the moon, by far the brightest thing right now, will have a full moon on Friday evening. It's the full flower moon for the month of May, but the moon may also spoil some of the visibility for a meteor shower by later on in the week. You don't need anything special like a telescope, just a little bit of patience. We'll hope that the sky clears out because the chance of rain will start to pick up in the pre-dawn hours as we head into Friday. More on the weather coming up. Wildfire season is already underway with 13 active, but smaller fires currently reported across Montana, including one south of Big Timber. And this week, Billings firefighters are taking part in a special wildfire training, but they aren't battling any real fires. As our Kelsey Marison finds out, it consists of various scenarios, ones that transition pretty well into the real world. May is Wildfire Awareness Month, and here at Riverfront Park, Billings firefighters are getting some trainings in ahead of wildland fire season. As the weather heats up, the Billings Fire Department is getting ready for its busy season. There's uh, guys working on in their incident command, and there's also us putting our hands on the um, pump to get more familiar with it, us newer guys. Austin Ray is coming up on his second year as a Billings firefighter and has been looking forward to the training. From getting extra practice with chainsaws, cutting down brush and trees, <laughs> to learning how to pull water from a nearby source if needed. Oh, it's pretty fun. I mean, the fire department, we're always having fun and especially getting out in this nice weather is a good time too. It's also a way to gain experience from seasoned veterans like Dan Hoff. Wildland fire is a big part of our department and it's it's a big part of what we do. Hoff is an engineer for the department and has been a firefighter here in Billings for more than 10 years. Now, you'll notice there's no actual fire here. It's where Hoff says it's good to have an imagination. The guys have to play into it. We'll give them the card that shows kind of like what they're supposed to see and you know what they're supposed to be doing. So he is simulating that he is putting out fire. He's, he's trying to put out a fire, fire line there. So Playing into their imagination and gaining necessary experience before the real deal. We have a lot of guys that have had a lot of experience, so they pass it down to us and simulate these situations. So saying, hey, this is a real world application. These are situations where this happened in real life. I think it's important to kind of look back, take your time and... Um, address the situation appropriately. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. And now a piece of legislation is making its way through the legislative system that could have a big impact on wildfire fighting in the state. House Bill 883 proposed by Republican representative from Conrad changes several aspects of how the state's fire fund is maintained and spent. Basically, it takes the state tax revenue and earmarks it to ensure that it's specifically for wildland firefighting. That money goes into account and it would go toward suppression, mitigation, restoration and more. And the hope is that it would allow to have assets ready in the state when a fire sparks. The bill has passed the Senate and currently is pending on a recouncil. Well, still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, the end of an era. Montana's top principal steps down a senior high. We'll tell you why and who will replace him next. And in sports, the best of the best, the top athletes from around South Central Montana race to finish the top 10 track and field meet. Highlights. Wait. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.